that your helmet during the war? No, not during the war. It's, it's yeah. the same as we wore. Uh -huh. It is a duplicate. I was wondering where the, the bullet holes would be. <laughs> All in the back. <laughs> <laughs> You can't, I can't give these guys M1? a break. <laughs> use, it, use it for everything. Cooking your, cooking your sea rations, washing your socks, yeah. everything, taking yeah. a bath. Shaving. And yeah. cooking yeah. your soup. Yeah. Yeah. We had called uh, sea ration uh, stew. Uh, a ter a the terrible whole, The whole squad would yeah. open their sea rations and stump it in the helmet. <laughs> and stir it all up and put the heat tablets underneath it. Yeah. And then the uh, you come back with your can, your sea ration can, and dip out as much as you could because it would be hot, see? Yeah. And the guy that owned the helmet, he made out, you know, because you couldn't get all your stuff out. It's yeah. too hot. <laughs> you videotaping now? Uh oh, good. Uh -huh. So you want to talk about okay. you want to talk about this M1 you brought? Oh, M1 rifle. This is the. Uh, it's a perfect infantry weapon, was at that time. Yeah. Held, uh, what did we do with the clip? Held a clip with uh, eight rounds in it, 30 caliber. You put it in here, shoved it in there, and fire it. Now, the, the rounds, there are the, the shell casings. They, uh, Right up here, the, right in there, there's a little tiny square hole underneath the end of the barrel where the gas from the, uh, from the explosion would retreat back down, down this tube here and cause the, uh, cause the action to open, mm -hmm. would uh, kick out the empty and chamber another round. Mm -hmm. Now when you fired the last round out of here, the action here would stay open and you get another one out of your belt and shove it, shove it in there and you could uh, fire from the shoulder you could probably fire the eight rounds in what three four seconds. Yeah, yeah. From the hip it would take you a little longer yeah. because you have to aim a little better. Very very good weapon. At one the war, during World War II, and it was the, the main weapon for the Allied, for the UN forces in Korea. Yeah. And you took good care of your weapon. Yeah. Good care of it. And the next thing you took good care of was that mesket. <laughs> The mess kit. No, the mess kit. That's, That's right. it. There. Yeah. Your food and your ammo is what you need. Yeah. Ah. Food and ammo. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. And these are sea rations. Uh, they you give used, you. It was during the Korean War? Oh, yeah. Well, this was the World War II. Yeah. World War II. <laughs> yes, you ate, yeah. the, you ate sea rations in World War II. From World War II during the Korean War. Would go like so. Yeah. Would be your, your, your dinner. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Wonder if you could get hot chow. No, you didn't always have hot chow. Yeah. Sometimes you eat sea rations when they were cold. Uh huh. And let me see what I do with that. And this is how you open your sea rations, right here. Little can opener. P thirty eight can opener. And this is this is an original. Yeah. Yeah. I got this out. I don't know, I got one, but I don't know where it is. <laughs> you, 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 yep. you just yeah. go right around that rim and you'd open your sea rations. And then uh, your second best friend, next to your <laughs> rifle, <laughs> is a spoon. No matter what they gave you to eat, you could stir your coffee or you could eat whatever you had they slopped into your mess kit. Now your knife and your fork were tools. They were not necessary uh, dining tools. Right. They were for whatever you needed them for. For instance, if you had to do something with your rifle here, if you had to dig out a cartridge casing or something, you, you would use that knife. It was a handy thing, but this, a lot of guys carried their spoon around their neck. 
Because if you get stuck out and you get that sea ration open and you can't get the food out of it, you can't eat it. Right. Yeah. And uh, <coughs> those were dinners. They had all kinds of dinners, all terrible. Yeah. <coughs> and uh, let me see, one of these I think is a peanut butter. Yeah. Peanut butter and some peanut jam. butter and jelly, candy, and uh, crack, cocoa. Cracker and something like uh, yeah. They had a little, little <coughs> cocoa. They had a, a bigger can, something like this. With, you know uh, what? I really want to open some of it. You want to open one? Well, we won't open that one because it'll probably, probably spoiled. We, 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 I mean, ju just to take them out of the, not to open the can, right? <laughs> oh, we'll take them out of the envelopes? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh, that's all right. Okay. I can yeah. seal them back up again. I, they got one of those. Talk about this. Oh, yeah. this is a safe conduct pass. I don't know if it's up or not. And uh, it's made to um, entice a soldier to pick it up. They think it's money. Then they turn it over and look at this side, and it gives them instructions for surrendering. So that if they feel like surrendering, if they want to come in and surrender, they bring this pass in and it guarantees them safe conduct back to the prison camp. So it's for the Chinese soldiers? Chinese or, or, or North, North Koreans. Koreans. Yeah. Yeah. North Korean. yeah. Now, I suppose <laughs> Russians too, there were Russians there. Mm. Yeah. But they, of course, there's no Russian on there. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, so it's in Chinese and Korean then? Chinese, North English? Korean, and South Korean. I think North and South Korean are both the same. same. Mm -hmm. This certificate guarantees good treatment to any Chinese or North Korean soldier desiring to cease fighting. Take this man to your nearest officer and treat him as an honorable prisoner of war. Of course. It, no guarantee is iron. <laughs> <laughs> it, many times, if you manage to bring in a prisoner, you would get a week's R and R in Japan because it was so hard to take a prisoner. They they would go out just hoping to capture prisoners, and the, the guys that got one, they they would get a week in Japan. Yeah. But uh, you know, it was very difficult to do. So everyone's so, like running up to the lines trying yeah, to. Yeah, it's like you know, <laughs> it, yeah. Well, <laughs> the surrender for the communist soldiers was very difficult. Yeah. Yeah, very yeah. difficult. They would be executed if they just were caught with this in their possession. Yeah. Okay. Bill, you want to talk about your map and stuff? Oh, just did. briefly. Did you did it? Yeah. Okay, good. Yeah. Uh, can you show us the shirts? Yeah, the medals. medals. Uh, but, uh, uh, let me explain myself. I, I volunteered for the draft made myself available for the draft in 1945 because that's what a lot of 17-year-olds did. So these medals, that's Army good conduct. There's no Navy good conduct on here, but I was in the Navy. <laughs> this is World War II victory. This is the American uh, campaign. This is the occupation, Navy occupation medal for Europe. This is the national defense because I served in two wars, that's what the two stars are. This is the Korean, uh, Korean, what is it, Korean, Korean King, action. King, King. King. Yeah. This is the United Nations uh, Award. Now over here I have the foreign awards. This one is uh, you know, New York State a Conspicuous Service Star. New York State Conspicuous Service uh, Cross. And this one is the Korean government uh, war, war service medal. That's what it is, war yeah. service. This is a war service yeah. medal also, right here. Now this is the uh, Korean Korea. presidential yes, unit. Korean, uh, this is the president, Korean presidential unit citation. Mm -hmm. And this one is, uh, uh, I don't deserve this too. I just left them on the shirt. These are two uh, presidential unit citations for the 3rd Division. When I got discharged, I was in the 3rd Division. Everybody wore those. So that's a U.S. pension. <coughs> the yeah. U.S., that, yeah. that's U.S. And that's where that belongs, by the way. Mm -hmm. Now, these uh, regimental crests for the 17th Infantry Regiment. So part of the 7th Division. That's 7th Division right there. And uh, this is the 3rd Division. 3rd Division. I, was, I served in both of those divisions. 
Oh, that's just uh, that that's infantry braid. Each each uh, branch of the <coughs> army has their own braid. For instance, uh, finance is gold, uh, artillery is red. Well, this is the only thing note that I was in the infantry. We so. call we call them pogey ropes. Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> so you you actually wore this when you're. Oh yes, I wore it. <laughs> that, that, I I wore that when I got discharged. Now to get all these medals. When they discharge you, you only get the ribbons. You don't get the medals. You only get the ribbons. So I went to the uh, New York State uh, Veterans <laughs> Service Office, and they wrote down to uh, they wrote down to St. Louis, where the records are kept. And it took about three years. They finally started dribbling these up to me. Jeez. And uh, for the New York State medals. Uh, Senator DeFrancisco got me those. And uh, in order, that took a long time. In order to get those medals, they <laughs> asked us right to uh, have to notify St. Louis, the record, where to keep the records. And it takes a long time because they have to verify all the rest of them. Because they don't want to send any bum dope to Senator DeFrancisco. So they make sure that you got, you wear what you, because a lot of guys just go buy a bunch of ribbons and run medals and put them on, you know. And uh, they have those uh, commemoratives. Yeah. Some of the guys, they got those all over their chest. Yeah. Well, I don't, I don't need to wear them. I got enough. 